Let's talk about copycats. Let's talk about ripoff artists. Aha! Another video with Dara. And yes, in the middle of the night. Which is becoming very usual around now. Okay, introduction. I'm Dara, but you probably need no introduction as to the topic. Very bright. If you're watching this video, then you already know who Casey Neistat is. What you may not know is just how much influence Casey has had upon other YouTubers. And non-tubers, come to think of it. Yeah, I've, I've just coined that phrase, alright? I know, coffee at night, not a good idea. People have been so inspired by Casey's style, his camera techniques, and even, and even his personality. To the extent that people started borrowing these traits. And so people flocked to the comment section of many of these YouTubers who were apparently copying him. Uh, who the f*** is calling me? Oh, you poor little thing. Bye bye, see you in the morning, okay. bye bye. What the hell was I saying now? So YouTubers comment sections were dominated by comments that range from, let's say, mild to moderately worded comments. Some of these YouTubers, who it could be argued, did more than their share of borrowing of Casey's style or general aesthetic or... Or what? Or videos, as in borrowing the just entire idea of one video and simply copying it. Some of those YouTubers have quit YouTube due to the domination of all this influx of negative comments with regard to them not creating original content. But now, since most of that controversy is already passed, then why is this still relevant? Because this is still happening even today. And not just with Casey Neistat, but with a range of all the biggest YouTubers. Check out this guy, for example. It may look like that guy is shamelessly copying Casey Neistat in that he is literally recreating something that is so fundamentally Casey Neistat that it is his trademark, his sunglasses. And it is shameless because this guy doesn't even know he is ripping Casey Neistat off. I'm gonna tell you something I know that you think I couldn't possibly know. He's making a custom pair of sunglasses and thinks he's being original. How do I know this? Because that guy is me. And that was only about eight months ago. It wasn't long after I made those sunglasses that a housemate of mine said, Dara, what are you, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to be like Casey Neistat? It was right then it dawned on me. For a person who prides himself on being kind of individual and doesn't easily succumb to social pressure, I was a weird one. <laughs> I'm basically mixing my coffee with water, with tea. See, I don't succumb to social pressure, all right? We'll see what the result is. So somehow his influence on me completely slipped me by. <sighs> that there was basically a witch hunt out for cringy Neistat copiers, and here I was completely unaware that I was totally ripping him off. When that was finally pointed out to me, I cringed so bad, and my cheeks lit up with the flames of cringy copycat hell. Not long after, and being much more well acquainted with Casey Neistat's work, I traveled to New York. And specifically, I went to Beam headquarters. Out of all of New York's top tourist attractions, this is one that had made my list. And what I found was a shrine to Neistat himself in the camera shop just under his offices. What we also found were a bunch of kids waiting outside his office for at least three hours and happy to wait another three more for Casey to pop his head outside the doors. There's people waiting there just to see Casey since 12 this morning. It was then that I understood just how influential this vlogger was in other people's lives. Now I didn't have the same patience, so I left pretty quick. After realizing that I had pretty much totally ripped off Casey Neistat, and that these kids were willing to wait four to six hours just to see the guy, I wondered just how many people there were like me who had been influenced to the extent that they emulated his style just like I did, and possibly without even knowing it. 
So I started digging around YouTube a little bit, and yeah, there are a lot. And though some of you might find that cringy, all these people are trying to do, including myself, is express some of their own creativity. And they're using a popular method to express that creativity. So in essence, he and other influential YouTubers have inspired others to create. And to take a quote from him himself, that's the magic of art. Great ideas promote other great ideas. No, I just misquoted him. Great ideas promote more great ideas, you get me. So there's no problem with being inspired and actually going out and creating something. But just remember, if you want to stay original, you need to stay way, way ahead of the curve. You've got to stay so far out there that the rip-off artists are just chasing you down and they will never actually catch up. And so if we want to stop chasing people, then we're going to have to start running on our own creative legs. That's what I think anyways. You should know who and where your inspiration comes from. But most importantly, why you're inspired. What has inspired me are the stories that they tell and the story that they create. And that's why I still keep these guys around, just to remind me of where my inspiration came from. If you guys have any comments or questions on this topic, I'd like to hear them. You're not Casey Neistat, so no one has any questions for you. Wait, what?